What's up and welcome to the channel. My name is Hagshot. Thank you so much for joining me today as we look at this table full of Smith & Wessons and try to figure out the best and worst M&P for concealed carry right here. We're going to talk about inside and outside the waistband, okay? If this is your first time stopping by, please make sure you subscribe to the channel. Drop me a like, leave me a comment, let me know which one you like best and or which one you think is worst for concealed carry. If you are a law-abiding concealed carry in the United States, you should know about this company and the services that they provide all of us as gun owners and concealed carriers. Today's sponsor, man, check these guys out. It's in our nature to protect the ones we love, to stand up to any danger, to be strong and courageous, to always be prepared to keep our family safe, to be the first line of defense. We are born to protect. All right, USCCA, man, we appreciate your support. We've been with those guys since 2015, dude. And peace of mind, all in one company at a very low price every month. I will take that and the training that they offer is is unmatched so there we go uh big thanks to our patrons man if you want to support our channel a dollar a month can do that if not if you just want to be a subscriber a viewer a supporter in that way we totally get it and understand and appreciate that so smith and wesson mp we have a good variety of guns here and i think the most efficient way to do this is as we go through each gun we're going to put a rating on it one to ten one being the worst, 10 being the best in a concealed carry role. Now, this is different for everybody, obviously. So this is just going to be my opinion on this. It may or may not work for you. All right. So I can't tell you what will work for you. Only I can tell you what works for me. Mrs. Hegshot's opinion here, of course, is integrated into this as well. All right. Let's start out with the Smith & Wesson M&P Performance Center. This thing is feature loaded and one of the best freaking shooting guns I have in my collection, I swear, dude. <laughs> this thing, it's ported, all right? Very little muzzle rise and felt recoil. High sights right here to co-witness with a red dot that I do not have on this gun. Let's be honest, dude. Every optic ready gun on the market now, if I bought an optic for every one of them, I would have a small fortune wrapped up in red dots. I just can't do it. I gotta kinda move optics around from time to time here. So obviously this one's a little bit naked, but you get the point. This one has the aggressive grip texturing on it and a tuned PC trigger. My goodness, this thing is amazing. I know that's not the focus, but I just gotta point that out. 17 rounds of nine millimeter. And really inside the waistband, this thing is like a one. This is a big gun, dude. You're talking 28 ounces unloaded, seven and a half inches overall length, 5.6 inches high. This is a this is a big gun. If you're talking about outside the waistband, it gets a little bit more interesting. Now, I don't like spending a bunch of money on holsters. I assume you don't either. Maybe you like collecting a bunch of different holsters. I personally don't. If you're going to carry, there's two things you have to have: a good holster, good gun belt, regardless of inside or outside the waistband. Tolster is the company we use. People that watch our channel and keep up with our stuff, y'all know we use Tolster. They have inside and outside the waistband, optic ready and non-optic ready holsters available. That's what we use. That's what I'm going to recommend to you. And then Core Essential Gun Belts is what I will recommend to you for the belt. Period. All right. I'm not really going to sway too much from that because I know they work. They're comfortable. They're low profile. They don't add a lot of bulk to my guns. That's what I like to carry. I'll leave a link down below. Discount code applies there. But if you have a good outside the waistband holster, which is where this gun fits, it's probably like an eight, maybe even a nine, because this gun is an absolutely amazingly accurate gun. Tech Shot loves this gun, and it's just an awesome shooting, very confident, inspiring gun right here. The grip is big enough to where you can obviously easily get to it if needed. Trigger's amazing. Obviously, if you put an optic on here and, you know, you're going out at night or something, it's going to hit on a lot of different uh, needs. 
in that market. Again, inside the waistband, eh, not so much. Performance Center Shield. Man, this gun surprised me how good this thing did, dude. It, it just, but it, but it, it checks the box for a lot of people. If you're older, if you have weaker dexterity in your hands, if you are a new shooter, if you're a new concealed carrier, if you are maybe a, you know, a younger person, maybe a woman, this gun is is amazing in that respect because it has such a light slide, and the way they do that is they actually have an internal hammer instead of a striker. So it's one less spring that has to be wound up, essentially, uh, uh, to be able to get that slide pulled back. They also have semi kind of wings in the back here, so it really helps to grip onto the gun. Just amazing. This one's a little bit tricked out now. It's a performance center, so it has the fiber optic sights. It has the ported barrel in the front, the cuts in the slide, all of that good stuff. Loaded chamber indicator, grip safety, flat face trigger, eight rounds in the mag, and when everybody else was trying to get as many rounds as they could into the smallest grip, the smallest gun they could, Smith & Wesson stepped back and said, hey man, what could a lot of people use uh, in the market in concealed carry and what can we, you know, help people out with? And they really, <laughs> as surprising as it was to me and maybe others, they really hit the nail on the head with the P PC shield. Inside the waistband, this one's probably going to be like a, maybe a six. It's a little bit heavier. You're talking about 23.2 ounces in today's market. That's kind of heavy. 3.8 inch barrel, 7 inches overall. All right, so if we look at this just versus the Shield Plus, which is a 10 round gun, by the way. All right, you're going to see one of the biggest drawbacks of this gun is that grip length. Now, drawbacks in, as far as inside the waistband carry. When you're talking about shootability, that's a different thing, but we're talking about carry here, okay? So just keep that in mind. So you can see there that the Shield Plus, this, this grip height right here is really what you're trying to conceal. And that's why I give it a five inside the waistband or a five or a six because it is a little bit longer and a little bit harder to conceal. If you're a woman and you wear tighter fitting clothes, it's gonna be harder to conceal this gun. Now, if you carry appendix, that may be less of an issue, uh, but that's just something you wanna keep in mind. And then obviously outside the waistband, this gun's like a 10 because it's not as big as something like the Performance Center Shield, but it still offers an amazing shooting gun uh, with a lot of different features for outside the waistband type of carry. Now generally outside the waistband carry is for bigger guns because it's more comfortable to carry that way and it's more comfortable to carry a bigger gun outside than inside the waistband. So some people may look at that and say, well, it's not a great outside the waistband carry, but you got to, I'm thinking as in terms of comfort, it, it's a super comfortable outside the waistband type of carry gun. And I don't think it's too ridiculous to carry this. Now, if you have something like the LCP2 outside the waistband, <laughs> okay, this is a little, this is ridiculous. This is not ridiculous outside the waistband. All right, so you get my point. Pretty awesome middle of the road type of carry gun that offers a lot of features for a lot of different people, I think. Now, I'm going to clump these two together. This is the new 10 millimeter from Smith & Wesson. They've done some really nice things here. Super aggressive grip texturing, flat face trigger, slide serrations front and rear. They've now raised those slide serrations. So what you see on the M2.0, what they used to do is just have the slide serrations down at the bottom. Now they've actually raised those all the way up. So when you do your press checks, you actually have something better to grip onto there uh, in the front. These guns are essentially the same size all the way around. They're about 28 ounces, 27.8 ounces. Uh, unloaded, actually the 45 I think is 25 ounces. This one's about 28 ounces. So there are no lightweights here. Um, what they do offer is extremely good capacity, in this case, 15 rounds of 10 millimeter. And a gun, if you are out in the woods and you're carrying, this is something you want because this will help protect you against maybe bears or maybe you know, any kind of predator that you may run across, 10 millimeter is an awesome gun. Outside the waistband, the 10 millimeter Smith & Wesson, I would say this is gonna be like a nine, all right? It's an awesome carry gun in that respect. Inside the waistband, it, it's like a two. It's too big, S same problem with the Performance Center Shield. You're starting to see what I, where I'm going here. 
This gun is just too big for that. Awesome trigger on this gun. Obviously you have the optic there, so you can really tune this thing to make it an amazing shooter. It has the, the sights in case your optic goes down. It has the sights that will co-witness with your optic right there. This is an amazing gun, dude. Now, the 45 shield, it is a little bit less useful in nighttime situations because this one does not have night sights. It is not optic ready. Those things can be changed, but I'm just talking about factory options and what I have to show you. This one also has the updated M2.0 trigger, but not the flat face trigger, which makes a pretty big difference. Now, this trigger is pretty good. It's decent. I'm a pretty good shot with it, but it's nowhere near as good as the flat face trigger. That's just something you're going to want to keep in mind. But if you want a 45, again, outside the waistband, 10 rounds in the mag, so you're going to lose capacity compared to the, to the 10 millimeter, the 45 is a great home defense option though. We're talking about concealed carry. This isn't, I, ballistically from what I've seen, 45 can help you against some predators. Uh, when you're out in the woods, I think 10 millimeter is actually a better option ballistically. Obviously you need to be able to get your shots on target. Recoil on both of these guns is, is essentially the same. You're gonna get a little bit more of a push, a uh, little bit more muzzle rise than a nine or something like that. But I think either one of these guns might serve you very well outside the waistband. Again, inside the waistband, it's going to be like a one or a two. It's just too big for that. So let's move on to the MMP9 M2.0. This is the subcompact. And you also have the compact, which is a little bit bigger. It's a 15 round gun. Think of Glock 19. That's what the MMP compact is. This is the subcompact, which is a 12 round gun. This breed of firearms, <laughs> I can call them, I guess, breed of firearms for lack of better terms, is kind of dying out kind of slowly. And the reason I say that, if you look at this gun compared to the 10 round shield plus, it is a chunkier, bigger, heavier gun. All right, so if you look at these guns side by side, it really, there's really not a whole lot of benefit here. You, you have about the same size grip for two extra rounds, for a gun that's about five ounces heavier, what's the benefit? I mean, you have about a half inch different in barrel length, so it's not gonna make too much of a difference ballistically. One advantage this gun does have is you may feel a little bit less recoil because it is heavier. Nice, bright sights right there, nice nice everything. I mean, this gun is really nice. I don't, I don't want you to take this the wrong way, it's just this this thing is losing its place in a world of higher capacity, slim, single, or half stacks, or however you want to however you want to categorize these. It's just kind of losing its place. And another gun that's losing its place here, not to get on get on too much of a tangent, but this is our original shield. This gun set the standard for this whole slim conceal carry nine millimeter market. It really did. The PPS, the original one, was good. This one, I think, set the bar. But now you have seven rounds, eight rounds, uh, ex extended one, extended mag, but, but check it out. Now we have a 10 round shield plus. They're essentially the same height. Seven rounds, 10 rounds. Check it out. They are essentially the same gun and you don't really get any extra width, maybe one tenth of an inch extra width and better grip texturing to control the nine millimeter it's a pretty soft shooting gun anyways and you have the flat face trigger again it's kind of <laughs> if you want to look at it in the in the smith and wesson realm they kind of took the shield plus and by the way you can get these ported and you can get a little bit longer barrels and all that good stuff honestly and you can get them optic ready they kind of put their original shield which has kind of been out of the market for a while anyways and they, they, they pretty much killed their subcompact gun with the Shield Plus. But it was necessary because everybody was doing something like this. And Smith & Wesson, they make one of the best guns out there. They had to do that. So I totally get that. The original Shields, by the way, if you're on a budget, man, before all this pandemic stuff, they were going for like 250 bucks everywhere. 200 bucks sometimes. Uh, so that's just, if you're on a budget, dude, I still, I would not argue with somebody if they just got an original shield, the trigger's not as good, but who cares, man? The grip texturing isn't as good. It's kind of slick. I don't like that at all. They've raised the magazine release, better trigger, 
better sights, optics ready now if you want, but still an amazing carry gun on a budget. What I'm gonna give the compact here for, for its size and carry, dude, you could go with a full size for a, for a few more ounces outside the waistband and do just as good with more capacity. I'm gonna give this thing like a five outside the waistband or a six. It would be comfortable for sure, but it's lost its place in the world. You could go a little bit heavier and have more capacity. It's about the size of a Glock 26, so if you wanted to carry inside the waistband, I would say it's about a seven, maybe even a six or a seven. It's kind of heavy, uh, comparatively speaking, in, in this realm. Yeah, it's just one of those things. It's kind of become the bastard of the carry gun market in a way. Again, that goes for the Glock 26, essentially. That goes for the HK VP9 subcompact. That goes for the CZ P10S. That goes for the SIG P320 subcompact. I don't even think they make that gun anymore. You, you see what I'm starting, where I'm going with this. These new high capacity, slim half stack guns have taken over. This gun inside the waistband is a nine to a 10. Absolutely amazing. Why? Because you have, like I said, optics ready if you want. Longer barrel if you want. Steel sights, awesome sight picture on this gun. A better grip texturing than on the original one. Flat face trigger. It just feels like you have a way bigger gun in your hand than what you do. 10 rounds, plus one in the pipe. The gun's absolutely incredible. Outside the waistband, you know, again, it's something that you can do if you want. This is actually the holster for it. I love carrying this thing outside the waistband. So personally for me, I would say it's like an eight or a nine. I would rather carry something a little bit bigger outside, but for comfort, it's a 10. For practicality, it's like a seven or an eight. Okay, let's, let's you know, kind of categorize it there. You could categorize these guns in many different ways, but that's how I see everything. I'm looking at each gun. How does it do comfort wise, what's the practicality of it carrying outside the waistband? Again, I could show you a bunch of small guns like this and say it's the most comfortable thing in the world. What's the practicality of carrying it? This to me isn't a practical everyday carry gun. I would rather you know, carry something a little bit bigger, take on a little bit more weight and have a much more controllable and shootable gun. Shield Plus is the best carry gun in the Smith & Wesson lineup. And by the way, I don't want to pick on the LCP too much. This is a good like running or deep concealment type of backup firearm or even main firearm, but the LCP Max has kind of taken the LCP too and made it obsolete to me anyways. So the Shield Plus is the best in this lineup. It offers you the best round capacity uh, inside the waistband carry. This is what I would go with. So if we're talking outside the waistband, Miss Hegshot's pick is actually the Performance Center. Because again, you have a super controllable and very awesome shooting gun right here. That's that's you just feel very confident when you pick this gun up. My pick would actually probably be the 10 millimeter, just because I love the way this gun shoots. I love the updated trigger. I love the performance center. Don't get me wrong, but I like having the optic on here. And if I'm going to carry outside the waistband, I'm going to carry a bigger, heavier gun. So that's just my opinion for these, man. The best and worst M&P to carry. There you go. Let me know what your opinions are down below. I will see you on the next one. And as always, hold them down.